Welcome to Taya Teachings. I am David Strickle, creator of the Taya Mindset Practice. And I am sharing this uh, out on social media. We are starting this as a new program for our Patreon community, but I'm sharing it everywhere that we normally are on social media when we do social media, which is Facebook, YouTube, uh, and then of course back on Patreon as well. For uh, all of you that are members of the uh, the Facebook group, Spirituality Gone Wild, I used to have a show on there uh, with Debbie a while back. Uh, you may remember me from that. Uh, and then, of course, we're on the Stream of David Facebook page and we're in the Taya Practice Facebook group, as well as the Stream of David YouTube channel. So we're uh, blasting to all of those places right now. But this is a show that we do for our Patreon community. Uh, just to kind of clarify uh, how we do things, uh, I have a podcast that I do for, it goes all over the world, called The Stream of David. <clears throat> Starting next month, we have a new podcast coming out, the Taya Practice podcast, which is going to be a second uh, podcast separate from The Stream of David uh, that we will also just offer everywhere that you can receive a podcast. And the difference between those two things is The Stream of David is my stream of consciousness tuned into source. I believe that we are all channels of source. I believe that we all express source in our own unique way. And I know that I have been really tuned into this source connection or source being, if you will, uh, from very early childhood. And I wrote a book about that. It's called The Stream. It's been out for years now. And I've been doing a podcast from that perspective for years. I've been trans-channeling for quite some time. And I have moved into a new phase where I'm not trans-channeling anymore. Uh, I am just allowing the stream's message to be blended with me because I am now, I'm just so in that message and in that vibe that it's always flowing from me. So it had gotten to the point where in, in the beginning, the trance was very important because my ego wasn't uh, very detuned. My ego was still a big part of all of it. And we have this, this ego aspect to us and we have this source aspect to us or our soul, however you want to refer to that. And our physical reality is sort of this combination of those two things and this sort of dance between ego and source, if you will. Uh, I believe ego is a good thing and it serves a purpose. And I do believe that ego is very often overdeveloped in our current world, thus overshadowing a lot of source. And we're told that source is a lot of things. And my understanding of source is that it's not a lot of the things that we're told that it is that it's not this judgmental deity, it's not needing to be worshiped, it's not uh, damning of our behavior or, or anything of that nature at all. My concept of source is that source is expansive energy, it is creative energy, it is pure love, it is without judgment, it is without fear, it's without measurement or, or quantification. All of that, or those things are all physical qualities and they're all qualities of our ego. So, my sharing of the stream going into trance was all about me. I trained myself to quiet my mind and my ego and really tap into that source and channel it in trance. And a lot of you have experienced me doing that. But as we moved, as I moved through my own practice of awakening, I had a Kundalini awakening in 2010. I've had this sort of ongoing awakening journey that I've shared with all of you since then. And the more I moved through that experience and detuned my ego and allowed more source, the more the trance channeling became more of a thing to please the audience because the audience wanted to hear from the stream. I've even had people comment on videos, you know, you're great, David, but we don't want to hear from you. We want to hear from the stream. But I was doing it. It was, it was almost like theatrics, you know, that I have to go into this trance to share this where I merged with source. And I believe that Adele, when she sings, is channeling source and that's her expression of source. And she's not going into trance to do it. She's just, she's raising her vibe to do it. She's definitely setting a positive intention and enjoying and appreciating the audience and wanting to serve them at the highest level. And then she goes out and she holds up a microphone and she sings. That's what I do with the stream now. So when you're watching me, I have that intention going I am sharing the stream all the time. So in sharing the stream's message and writing the book and starting the podcast back in 2017, and then going on to create a course around the teachings, 
my intention was to take all of that information that I channel, just like a lot of the information that other channels are sharing, and create a system to apply that information as my way of life. And I did. I didn't have a name for it. I just did it. And I decided to create this course when I started my podcast and published my book and left the corporate world behind called Abundance Breakthroughs. And I started teaching this eight week course called Abundance Breakthroughs. And I had a lot of people from my podcast and from Instagram. I was very active on Instagram back then. Want to take the course. And it was fantastic. And I taught that course for years. And then I started bringing in coaches and we really started expanding. And the course morphed into a mindset practice that we now call TIA. T-Y-A, it stands for Trust Your Abundance. And what TIA is, is the practical application of the stream's teachings. So now, Source, flowing through me via these teachings, has shared on just about every topic I can imagine at this point. And we've been asked every question. I love questions of the stream for the stream because so often new information comes from these, these sort of challenging questions. But we know what their answer is most of the time. We know their answer is we appreciate all things, align with us, appreciate all that is, uh, understand what your ego is all about and the purpose that it serves, understand where you are vibrationally, have an intention for what you want to experience while you're in this physical journey. And that's the guidance they give for life. So those became the four pillars of Taya. And I have come to understand in my journey that David and David Stream is great, but the way I'm serving humanity is by sharing Taya, that Taya is the thing, because what Taya does is Taya gives you the tools to allow your own version of the stream to flow. We're not here to make you dependent on the stream's message. You don't, you know, if, if you love listening to me or the stream or learning Taya, you can do as much of that or as little of that as you want. It's fine, but we're not here to, to become a guru that you're dependent upon. Oh, I've got to hear what the guru has to say. What does the guru want me to think? We're not about that. We're not about telling you what to think at all, at all. We are about giving tools for those who are aligned to learn how to think, how to, how to go inward, how to detune their own ego and allow more of their own source to step forward and discern their preferences from there. That's what Taya is. Taya gives you those, those four pillars and the tools that support the four pillars are all about you allowing more source, detuning your ego, which does not mean eradicating your ego. You're not going to not have an ego. As long as you're in physical, an ego is a component of your physical journey. And the, the purpose of ego is to be the discerner of preference. Your ego likes this. Your ego doesn't like that. Your e the way that you know the difference between your ego and source is the ego is about preference. Source is about appreciation of all of it. So source does not have a preference for us. I have never gotten direction from source. I have absolutely had an experience where I believed I was getting direction from guides because I landed on the concept of spirit guides and there was nothing wrong with that. And there is nothing wrong with that. But I came to understand that for me, my guides were source being filtered through my ego because my ego had the pre preference. My ego was the guide. It was a higher vibrational version of my ego and the guidance was in a positive direction in almost all cases. So it's not a bad thing, but just understanding what is your ego and what is source. Source is pure love. Source is no judgment. Source is not a preference. Source is not a measurement of anything. So source is not deciphering for us what is good and what is bad for us. Because source is telling us that all of it creates expansion. The painful things that we endure, the, the, the suffering that we endure, the obstacles that, that we meet, the things that we have gone through in life, the things that we label traumatic, all of that stuff exists to expand our being, expand our consciousness. Our eternal being is pure consciousness. It's not physical. Obviously, physical is, is an experience that has a beginning, a middle, and an end. But the consciousness version of us, the, the source version of us, is eternal. And that eternal version of us manifests into physical to have an expansive experience. 
and source is not dictating what that experience is. And I know there are people with different spiritual beliefs. There is space for all of that in these teachings, but we are teaching my understanding of what source is, is offering. And we've created a practice that allows you to make that your operating system. So the real subject tonight is operating systems because I start to talk about operating systems and people think, oh, it's some computer geek uh, talking about, you know, some computerized operating system. What does that have to do with me? And certainly what does that have to do with source and my soul and spirituality? Well, your operating system is your human belief system. Your human belief system is what's creating this illusion of reality that we're in. And we don't, I don't need to go too deep into all of that. I don't need to go too deep into um, quantum physics and illusion of reality. I have a basic understanding of that stuff. There's certainly other people that study that far deeper than I do. My understanding of it is that, that physical 3D reality is this experience of consciousness that we are observing as, as a physical experience. And in this physical experience, there are a lot of things to be found that are not found in the energetic realm a lot of physical pleasures, a lot of things that we discern as our preference that we want to experience. I won't bother with a list because I think we all know what I'm talking about, all the things that we like about life. But in order to experience the things that we like about 3D physical life, we also have to include obstacles because our obstacles that we manifest and we manifest all of them are there to inspire us toward new creation. Everything that we create is a reaction to a perceived obstacle. Everything. I want to solve this problem. I want to move through this. I don't want to experience that anymore. I want a better version, an improved, expanded version of that. And there's evidence all around us that we're expansive beings because what are we always doing? We're creating new technology. We're experiencing new things. We're moving through new experiences in life. We're expansive beings, obviously. There's just evidence, there's overwhelming evidence that we are ever expanding beings. And being an ever expansive being has the, the concept of that. That's we have this innate knowing that we're expansive and we want to experience these new things. That's why we get bored when we're static and create new things, even if those new things are unwanted experiences, such as illness and things like that. But we do create new out of boredom because we are just wired that way. That's how we are eternally. And our ego is dancing with all of that. But in this matrix of human creation, which is just the collective ego of humanity, the concept of consumerism is often presented to us as expansion. That we need to have more, have more, make more money, buy more things, have more stuff. That's expansion. That's what you're here for. Whoever dies with the most toys wins. Have you ever heard that? Well, there's nothing wrong with having those experiences. There's, there's no right or wrong in the eyes of source. But the, the matrix has created all of this human construct and presented it to us as an operating system. And it's, it's, it's expressed in religion. It's expressed in, in government and law. It's expressed in uh, family traditions and customs and, and customs that have to do with uh, you know where we are geographically and things like that. We have all these things woven into this matrix that sort of provide for us this template for how we're supposed to live our lives. And we absorb that. We absorb that pre-birth. Certainly we're discerning preferences. We all hear from expectant mothers that the baby reacts differently to different foods and temperatures and sights and sounds and all of that stuff. The mother is very attuned to that. And then certainly after the birth process, when we are fully physically manifested, we are a little sponge just attracting all of these beings to us and we're observing and we're learning and we're learning how to be a human being. And we are creating our belief system in that process. And we may be indoctrinated into a religion or a set of family traditions or customs uh, in that process. And certainly as independent strands of consciousness, some of that stuff works for us and some of it doesn't. Notice how consistent that is. So we emerge as our own unique being, one of a kind. And, and we're a combination of, of DNA, our, our family lineage, our parents, our environment, customs, beliefs, our economic status, the health status uh, that, you know, that we manifest as, as, uh, as part of the, the birthing process. And so we move into this belief system. We start operating our lives consciously creating via our belief system. 
and we move through life and we make adjustments and tweaks to this belief system as we go. And then we get to a point in life where perhaps we have suffered enough in a belief system that we want a different one. So we move on to something else and we try that other belief system. I was watching a video the other night that talked about the purpose of, of Christianity in its modern form is sort of an entry into spirituality. And you may move through something like Christianity or some other uh, type of religion and then re and, and have it serve you for a time and then move to a place in your journey where it no longer serves you. And then you go to what I call mainstream spirituality. And we all, we, we know, I don't know if we all know, but we likely know that for humanity, organized religion is on the decline and spirituality is on the rise. Spirituality is becoming more popular. That's been going on for about the last 50 years or so, 60 years, that we're, people are becoming more spiritual and a little less into organized religion. And that's all forms of the matrix. So spirituality is its own version of belief system. And it has led many of us sort of through different iter iterations of spirituality, sometimes through law of attraction, because we want to attract more of that consumerism that we've been taught is so good. So we, we start learning about LOA and we're learning all about how to attract all the money and the things that we want. I did that. I spent a good part of my, um, my adult life doing that. I understood law of attraction. Age 14 was my first recollection of it. And so I created this scenario where through my teens and 20s and 30s uh, into my early 40s, I spent in the belief system of law of attraction consumerism. I want to have a good job. I want to have a big house. I want to have fancy cars. I want to have lots of money. Uh, I want to have all this stuff because I grew up poor. To me, having all this stuff was what life was all about. And then in my early 40s, I realized I manifested all the stuff. And my life is still not what I want it to be. So what else is there? So I started exploring other things. That's where I started meditating. <clears throat> and I started just kind of going inward and exploring that, okay, you know, I've got all the things, all the little bells and whistles that were supposed to make me happy. And sometimes they do, but not in general. There's got to be more than just this. There's got to be more than a bigger house than this and, uh, you know, three or four fancy cars or, or whatever was next for me in consumerism. There had to be something more. And that's when I started really transforming my life and created tools. And through the meditation, I had the Kundalini awakening. I was told that I was a channel in that process. And I started channeling it at one point. And that period was about a 10-year period for me. And then I realized, gosh, I've created this, this system for myself because I needed it. I needed to unravel the old systems. And the only way I could unravel the old system was to create a new one. Because we default into a belief system no matter what. I'm not going to go too deep in this interaction into how we're robots and we need, you know, we're AI and all that stuff. You can hear me talk about that plenty, but as the first Taya teaching episode, I really want to lay the foundation of what all this is really about, that no matter what we do, we default into a belief system, that the, the most devout atheist out there, uh, gosh, the, the, the most devout atheist that I can think of right now is Bill Maher. I watch Bill Maher's show every week. It's my only connection really to what's going on in politics. I like him because I think he's smart. He has people from both sides on. I love hearing and seeing and understanding and appreciating both sides. I like that about his show. And he's an atheist. He, he did a documentary several years back called Religious, which is a fantastic documentary about organized religion. And it even goes into spirituality a little bit. He doesn't believe in any of it. If I were to meet him and I would start telling him about the stream and Taya, he would tell me that I was full of shit. And that, you know, it was all BS. It was all my own imagination. And it was something kooky and I can go have my kooky beliefs if I want. I'm completely fine with that because I appreciate him as an atheist. But the interesting thing is, is he's not really an atheist. He does believe in something. What he believes in is politics. The political system is his God. That's what he believes in. He gives it a lot of power, so much so that he has this ongoing, very successful show where he talks politics all the time. He's given millions of dollars to political candidates. And he, so that's his belief system. So we all have one. You can claim to be too intellectual to follow religion, too intellectual to be one of those kooky spiritual people, and you can be above it all, and you're still going to default into some sort of a belief system for yourself, and it's going to be rooted in something. So for me, in all of my learning and experiencing, I came to understand that universal law 
And I wanted to really understand universal law because the law of attraction was very intriguing to me. Again, I understood it very early on that you create your life via consciousness and you attract things to you. Really, you're creating, but it feels like attraction. I get it. So if that's a universal law that's true, then why do we not attract everything that we want all the time? And a lot of people write the secret and all the Abraham teachings off as BS because they get into it a little bit and it doesn't work on all topics. And they say, see, it doesn't work. This is BS. This isn't real. This isn't true. This is a bunch of kooky people wishing uh, that they had more and, and buying seminars and being taken advantage of, blah, blah, blah. I think they're just having their experience and it's great. So law of attraction was part of it. Okay. Obviously there's a universal law that, 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 uh, that we are all creating via consciousness as a universal truth, I should say. And in my seeking to understand, well, why can I not just then align myself with being rich and happy and healthy and having fun all the time? Why can't I do that? No matter how much work I do, how much meditation I do, how much alignment I do here, I've gone from being uh, uh, from a single parent, minimum wage earning poverty level household as a child through no formal education whatsoever to earning a mid six figure income and living a very nice lifestyle. I've manifested that because I believed it. I was able to believe that I could do that. And, and therefore I created that reality for myself. And I was living in the reality that I thought was everything. To me, that was the version of rich, not being a multimillionaire. That was beyond my grasp. But when I was a kid, if you lived in a two-story house and you drove a German car and you had a fancy built-in refrigerator, you were rich. And when I was 40 years old, I had all those things. Fancy two-story house, built-in sub-zero refrigerator, and a Mercedes in the garage. That was my version of rich. And I realized, wow, I've manifested. I'm not really rich. I'm not Bill Gates. You live less than a mile away from me, and we were very different economically, certainly. And I'm not Bill Gates. I'm not really rich, but I'm living what I thought was rich. I realized that I've manifested everything that I thought I needed to be rich, to be happy. And I wasn't, not in every area of my life. So I, I, I thought, well, gosh, this law of attraction thing works because I've proven it to myself that it works. I went from zero to here from nothing with no help from parents or family or, or anything. So I, there had to be something else. And that's when I went inward and realized, well, wait a minute. Our vibration is not just our focus. Our vibration is absolutely impacted by polarity. That's what astrology is all about, that the, the alignment of the planets and the energy that keeps the, the uh, universe working the way that it is, is a system. So there's a system there that takes us on this vibrational journey. And this vibrational journey is dictating how, how our vibration is. Now, our belief system, however, is how we react to that vibrational journey. And that's important. That, to me, became everything. Everything. Our belief system is how we react to our vibrational journey. And our belief system is creating our reality. Our belief system is the law of attraction. Our belief system. I believed I was worthy. I believed I was worthy of a six-figure executive position. And I think being a white man in this society, I'm sure helped that. I'm sure that contributed to that. No doubt it contributed to that. Because it was easier for me to, to fit into that matrix and, and, and be that, even though I wasn't really that. I had employees that had to have MBAs to work for me, yet I had a 10th grade education. That was reality. That was reality. I really manifested myself into that. So I realized that, you know, my, my conditions, uh, the things that were positive for me in life and, 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 uh, in those things I used to my advantage, but ultimately it was my belief system that placed me in the scenario that I had manifested. And then there was a lot of other things going on in my life that I didn't want that were still present. Why are those things present? Because I, I thought money and material things was all that, that was. So I wasn't in a loving relationship. I wasn't in a, a healthy body. I, I wasn't in a job that I even liked, even though it paid very well. It was what I believed I could achieve. I can, I can claw my way up this corporate ladder in this specific industry because it was the alignment of the stars for somebody like me. And, and that became reality. 
So I've really come to understand, or I really came to understand that belief system is everything. You're consciously creating your reality and you're moving through vibrational flow. You're not going to solve vibrational flow because vibrational flow is the thing that is creating the twists and turns of our lives that ultimately expands our consciousness. So that's why law of attraction in and of itself, and if that's all you're studying, you're liable to find it frustrating. You're liable to find those, those beliefs without anything else peppered into it flawed. And, I, and I'm being a bit cynical here, but I will say it's, it's easy to note that that law of attraction message sells. Come think your way into being rich without having to do a thing. Of course that sells. Who doesn't want that? And there's nothing wrong with the teachers that are doing that. And the reason that I say that is because we're all on a journey and law of attraction very often is a gateway into spirituality. If you don't give up and keep going further and deeper, you will create an awakening journey for yourself. It's a great entry for a lot of people. I have worked with a lot of people now over the years in, in Taya Boot Camp who started out really into law of attraction. This makes sense to me. I've proven it to myself that it works, but there's got to be more. And Taya was always about, and it is about, that what's next? What do you do once you understand that you consciously create? You create some things for yourself intentionally. You feel like you have the keys to the universe, and then something spins out. Something falls apart. Something demanifests. Something doesn't always go perfect. Why am I in negative vibration? Oh, no, I can't be down here because so-and-so says I have to be up and happy all the time. But then I can't be, and I'm beating myself up about it, and beating myself up, I'm right back to where I was before I learned about any of this stuff sometimes. That's because we're in vibrational flow. We're not solving vibrational flow. It's part of the human experience. It's part of the physical experience. It is there to drive our vibration down into negative, to allow us to consciously create obstacles for ourselves. We create all of them. To consciously align with people that are lower vibrational uh, experiences, lower vibrational relationships. Uh, that's how we get into these scenarios where we're in a toxic relationship or a toxic work environment. Or our family is so toxic. I don't even like that word because it's, it's victimy. You know, you're not claiming any responsibility in your participation in the toxicity when you label things that way. And, and I think there's great power in claiming ownership of everything that you're manifesting, even the stuff that you don't like and you don't want just claiming that, Hey, I don't know how in the hell I manifested that, but somehow I did. And claiming ownership of it is the first step into moving through the experience and out of it, no matter what it is. And I know that if you are stuck in an unwanted experience, poor health, a body that you don't like a relationship that isn't serving you, a work environment that you don't like, a bank account that's always empty, whatever it is, the stuff that we don't want to experience, and you feel stuck there because you can't move yourself out of it, it's very frustrating. And you go through this, this cycle of trying to lift yourself out of it and doing some meditation and, and, and doing some different you know things that where there's lots and lots of tools out there. Everything has the power that you give to it, so nothing's wrong. So you're, you're using some tools and you're starting to lift yourself out only to be drawn back into the old unwanted vibration like you're attached to a rubber band. I understand that very well. And that's because of vibrational flow. There's no solving vibrational flow, but you can absolutely change how you choose to react to that vibrational flow. Absolutely. And that's what Taya is. And that's what I'll be talking about in these teachings. That's what I talk about all the time anyway, is the tools and the skills to start reacting to your own natural vibrational flow differently. So astrology is a fantastic practice. Reading your horoscope, however, can become a self-fulfilling prophecy because that astrologer may be very dialed in to what your natural vibrational flow may be, but your belief system and how you are reacting to that vibrational flow is actually going to dictate your reality. <clears throat> so an astrologer doesn't know that unless they are uh, have some gift of, of knowing what your belief system is and understanding vibrational flow, which would be a very personalized experience. I'm not saying it's impossible. They can't possibly know all of that. Somebody writing a horoscope for everybody on the planet that has a June 13th birthday, even a June 13th, 1972 birthday, they're not going to get it right for everyone because not everyone is, is responding the same to vibrational flow. It's just a truism or a general thought. 
So you can follow that stuff if you want, but understand that if it's causing you to feel fear or lower your vibration because someone's suggesting to you that you're not going to be abundant because of your, your date of birth or your sign in some way, you don't have to believe that. You have the ultimate power over your reality. And I will always teach that. I will always teach that. I have seen that manifest for so many other people now from all walks of life, from mid-20s to early 70s. Uh, that's the age range. And uh, on in, in so many different countries, I can't even tell you how many countries now of people that we've had that have come through the boot camp program that I have witnessed manifesting a transformation, at least while they're in boot camp. And once they're out, what they do next is completely up to them. But we have this community to support all practitioners, whether you ever take any of our classes or not. I'm teaching it far and wide because I want humanity to know this stuff. I want humanity to get it. I understand all of humanity is not going to know it and not going to get it. And that's okay. My ego is wanting all of, all of humanity to get it. Source doesn't care. Source is saying, here it is, take it or leave it. It doesn't matter because no matter what your belief system is, you are having an expansive journey as a physically manifested being. Be a Thaiist or not. Be a spiritual follower, be into spirituality or not. Be a Baptist or a Catholic or an atheist. Whatever your belief system is to source is the right belief system because you're having your experience. So there's no dogma built into any of this. This is all a system that I've come up with that seems to work very well. It seems to work very well for other people because it's really stripped of all rules and judgment and worship. All of that other stuff that gets tends to get added in when things blossom into religion is not present here. There's no specific way that you're supposed to think or believe or things that you have to do or you can't do. Uh, getting out of it and getting away from it, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, getting uh, into lower vibrational manifestations uh, for a prolonged period, that's even built into the practice. We call it a spin out. That's part of it. And very often we spin out and we get we fall off the wagon of these, this, this practice and then we get back in. And then when we get back in, we realize that there was so much value in the spin out. There was so much value in the obstacle that we moved through the experience of. That none of that stuff is bad. None of that stuff is something that shouldn't be. None of it. And when you move into source perspective, which is simply appreciation of all things, we're all capable of that. You may think that you're not, but you start doing a little bit of this work and you will start showing yourself that you are completely capable of tapping into your own natural source connection, which is you. That's the eternal version of you that doesn't forsake you. It doesn't leave you. Your ego overshadows it, perhaps, but you learn to detune the ego and allow more source to be present in your reality. And when that's going on, you are appreciating all things. All things. I saw a TikTok earlier today with some, some spiritual teacher. Uh, it had lots of views and lots of likes, and, and I'm sure he does very, very well. And he was saying that sp spirituality is so important. It's more important now than ever. And I listened and I appreciated what he said. And I thought, I don't agree with that because you, you're preaching. You, you're basically saying that your belief system is very important, meaning more important than others. And therefore, everyone needs to follow your belief system. Now, I will teach this stuff until the day I die. I will teach Taya to the day I die. It oozes out of me. I am here for whomever wants to listen to it and pay attention to it. And, and that's fine. That's what I'm all about. But I'm not saying it's the most important thing. Because if source isn't judging, then source isn't saying, I guide all of my children to be Taiists. Source is not saying that. I don't think source is saying that for a second. Maybe if I came forward and said that, I could get really rich and sell lots of books and big seminars and fly around on a private jet. That would be lovely. My ego would love that. But I'm not going to say that because it's bullshit. It's not true. It's not the most important thing. Catholicism is not the most important thing. Atheism is not the most important thing. Politics is not the most important thing. I know so many people right now that will tell me and tell you that if you're not politically active, then you're part of the problem. If you're not out there protesting and pushing against and banging a drum uh, on their belief system, then there's something wrong with you. I, I have lost more friendships in the last few years over not taking sides in politics than anything else because people want you to soothe their ego by believing in their belief system. And I just don't want to do it. 
but I don't think that their belief system is any more or less important than mine. That's when you know your channeling source, when there's no preference present. Your chan- and you all do it. You all do it. When you get to that space where you're not preferring anything, you're appreciating all of it. It's all good. It's all expansive. It's all creating the human journey. Because when you're, you're channeling your own version of source, you're not afraid of anything. Nothing is scaring you. There, there's no fear being uh, manifested because you're triggered by something. All that stuff just melts away when you're, you're in that high vibration of source allowing. You don't have a preference. You love it all. You don't stay there. We all get knocked out of it because of polarity. We're going to go down our spiral. We're going to find ourselves a little polarized. I've gotten really good at catching myself and saying, oh, why do I care? Is this worth going down my spiral about? No, there's nothing that supersedes my allowing of source and appreciation of all that is. And I believe those are the folks that transcend their circumstances that the plague doesn't get them, that the war doesn't wipe them out, that the Holocaust doesn't end them, that they move through and out of those experiences into other things because they didn't activate the vibration of fear and judgment that drew them into the very thing they were fearing and judging. So that's what this set of tools is all about. This set of tools is is exactly that. And I teach it uh, everywhere. (laughs) So we have a Patreon that you can join and you can certainly, Patreon is all about a learning journey. You choose your uh, tier, you get into it for as long as you're into it and you uh, get, uh, you, you, you uh, can move up, down and out. I got an Apple watch today and it's, I'm not used to it ringing and doing all this stuff. And it just went off and I'm like, oh yeah, there's something on my wrist. So anyway, you can get into the Patreon program up to you. You can listen to the stream of David podcast starting next month. You can also listen to the Taya practice podcast. We'll post links of that in all of these places where you're watching us right now so that you can, uh, you can listen to that every week. So there'll be two podcasts every week. There'll be additional live videos and coaching and group training and Patreon. We still have the bootcamp program for everyone that's aligned with going through all of that. That's connected to Patreon now as well. And you will be seeing more of me on social media, uh, every Thursday night, as a matter of fact, Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific, after I remind myself of the time, uh, we're bringing uh, Claim Your Power Hour back. We'll have uh, different hosts on with me, and uh, we're going to raise the vibe, talk about Taya, talk about all the stuff that we that we teach all the time, and have some fun in the process and, and put that out there because I, I want all of you to be inspired by this. If it's your path, if it's your journey, if you find resonance with it, it's the thing for you. If you're not into it, that's fine too but I'm putting it out there and making it available for more and more of humanity. That's, that's my focus these days. I want to take this time to thank all of you for watching. A lot of you uh, stayed on the entire live program. I appreciate that. Those of you that are watching in the future, uh, I've given you lots of places where you can go to learn more. Uh, as long as I'm kicking around on the planet, I will be here for you and here to teach this practice for humanity. Thanks so much for watching.